So today is officially the last day of winter. There's actually sunlight outside. There's a song in my heart and pollen in my sinuses. Today I thought I would just do like a chit chat, get ready with me type of situation because it's really talking. I um, woke up feeling like super girly, which is not usually my MO. I like put on a blouse with it's like fluffy flu frilly sleeves and I curled my hair. It's a lot, it's a feeling. I want to do some sort of soft feminine springtime makeup look. I want it to be a little bit more glam than what I normally go for. If I forget to mention a product, it will be in the description box below, but I'll try to mention everything as I'm using it. I'm gonna prime my face first because I want this makeup to last forever and ever. Even though I know that the rest of the week is going to be pretty rainy, this just feels like hope. It feels like Annie, the sun will come out tomorrow, but not actually tomorrow. Probably it won't. we won't see the sun again until like May. I primed my T-zone area with the NYX pore filler and with the Becca Evermatte Ever matte poreless priming perfecter. I'm starting with the Becca Ultimate Coverage Complexion Cream. It's got the accent on it, so I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be pronounced creme, but I refuse. This stuff is super full coverage. One pump goes a long way, but my pump is weird, so there's like a pump and a half on there. I'm going to make my own little concoction. On the back of this Bath and Body Works Scandal Lid, I'm going to add a little bit of the MAC strobing cream in there because I want a matte, I want a full coverage look, but I don't want it to be too matte. I want it to be more of like a soft matte look. I feel like, oh that's a lot. I feel like the strobing cream lightens the foundation a little bit. Then I take a little bit of the NYX Pro Foundation Mixer in the shade Olive, just a little bit darker than the, uh, foundation. So I'm just gonna mix that all up. So, okay. Spoilers for Arrival. I saw Arrival last month and it changed my life. It's so dramatic. It didn't change my life. But it definitely impacted me in a way that I didn't think that it would. I thought it was just gonna be another like, whoa man that's so deep sci-fi movie the same way um Interstellar or Gravity was, where it was just kind of like, ooh, sci-fi, but elegant, you know? That's all I thought it was gonna be. It was a lot more cerebral, I guess. That's a really like annoying, pretentious movie word. It was, it made me think a lot more than I thought it, thought it was going to. I just got the letter on Friday and I, I had no idea what the actual premise of the movie was. It made me cry. It made me think about non-linear time a lot more than I already normally do. <laughs> I'm just gonna blend all that out with the beauty blender. And how time exists forever and ever without our input and the way that we experience time has a lot to do with how we speak. Not just time, how we perceive the world. How we perceive the world is partially limited by our linguistics. Ooh, you guys like wanna see all of my lace? There are some tribes in, I wanna say Africa, that they didn't have a word distinguishing blue and green, so they couldn't really see one of the two. But when they were given a word for whichever one they didn't have a word for, then they were able to distinguish it. So looping all of this back to Arrival. Um, spoilers for the movie. These aliens come down to Earth and they're like, hey, we are giving you the gift of our language so that you can speak in a way that is less staccato and more of the broad picture and once 
Amy Adams was able to interpret that language and speak that language, she had she then experienced time in a non-linear way and was able to but to experience all of her time all at once. That's something that I think about a lot ever since I read Slaughterhouse Five. I hate to be that annoying person that's like, I love Slaughterhouse Five. That book really changed how I think about time and death and our relation to time and death. Now I'm gonna highlight, I want a super bright highlight. So I'm going to use the uh, Maybelline Better Skin Concealer in the shade Medium. So after seeing Arrival, I have just been kind of, it been in my feelings <laughs> and thinking about time and language and perception of reality based off of how we how we speak and how how many different experiences there are in the world based off of people's use of language. So I went to the bookstore today and I picked up a book on Black Americans language and how over the past 50 years linguists have been actually studying it and its nuances as its own form of language versus it being a I'm paraphrasing on the back of the book now versus it being the I think there's a degradation of the English language of how it's its own uh, dialect I guess with its own set of rules and all that jazz. I definitely was raised by black people that would always tell me to speak properly. I'm not saying that that's wrong or anything like that, but that's just my experience. Um, but there's definitely rules to it, to African American vernacular English. That's the term that I learned from Tumblr because if you ever look at like people trying to imitate the way black people talk, there's a way to do it wrong. When the when the alt-right was going to infiltrate black Twitter and was, there was like a site or something telling people how, what to say, you could tell that it was white people who did not speak the language naturally trying to imitate the way that they think black people sound. And even sometimes with my husband, I say things and it doesn't correlate. So even though I didn't grow up, basically I grew up being taught to speak the Queen's English more or less. I don't have another analogy. <laughs> things rub off because culture. I'm very excited to read this book. I'm awful and I can't think of who wrote it, but I will include it down here. And the name of the book. I know the name of the book is Talk Back, Talk Black. I'm gonna cream contour. I've got the Heart Candy Highlight Contour Stick Duo and I have it in the shade Deep. This is the best contour shade I have found drugstore wise. I haven't tried anything high end. For deeper complexions, that's actually a good contour stick and not necessarily a bronzing shade. It's cool toned, which is good. So I'm just going to do a little bit on my cheekbone. I was really honestly only at the bookstore because it was open um, and I was killing time before H&M opened because I was looking for a shirt. I got to H&M and I was very anticlimactic. Shopping in general is very overwhelming for, for me. Shopping in store versus shopping online, super, super overwhelming for me. So I was at the bookstore and the bookstore was also very overwhelming. I'm glad that I wasn't there for with the purpose of finding a book, I kind of just stumbled into a book that I wanted to read. There's so many different genres of literature, but they're all clumped together in fiction literature, which is really annoying. And then all of the specialty sections are super small. Poetry, like, I remember when I went to Barnes & Noble a few years ago, this was in a different state, so maybe it is still the same in that state. There was a lot. There was a lot to choose from. Here, there was not a lot to choose from. It was like, 
poetry that you've been assigned in school. And there were a couple of modern people, and I only know that they're modern because I was like, that's an interesting sounding name. I would Google the person to see if they were a modern poet. I ended up not getting a book of poetry though, just because I was overwhelmed with which one I wanted and I was only trying to spend so much money. So I ended up not getting one. But now I have a few poets that I want to definitely read. I will leave all of their information in the description box below and some links to their books because I was skimming through some of their poems and they were really, they were really my speed. The layout of the book was even my literary aesthetic. So I was very into it. But like I said, there were just too many choices and I got overwhelmed and so I walked out with a book on language. <laughs> To set my highlight, I'm using the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Dim Light. I absolutely love this stuff. I want all of the ambient lighting powders. After a while, it looks just like the perfect highlight. Not a highlight in like an Anastasia Beverly Hills kind of like super blinging look, but in a really soft glowy way and then for a little bit of bronzing but not too much because the bronzer that I want to use is a little shimmery and I want to stay it more soft matte I'm going to use the the elf contouring blush and bronzing powder in the shade Turks and Caicos I'm just gonna lightly bronze my face okay I don't want to be too bronzy because I want that highlight to still be like bleh. these eyebrows I really love having my natural brows and not doing anything to them, but at the same time, sometimes I just look at myself and I'm like, girl, what are you, what? I spend a lot of time on YouTube, and so through rabbit holes of watching music videos, I discovered Sabrina, Sabrina Claudia, and I uh, colored me obsessed. Her song, Confidently Lost, stop it. And that video, stop it. Something about that video reminds me of my grandma's house. I'm positive it's the light coming through the bedroom onto the chair and the lace curtains. I am obsessed with that video and that song right now. She looks so beautiful in that video. Honestly, that's probably what that that right there I watched that video yesterday and I was just feeling like I was like I'm a girl because I woke up wanting to wear lace and it was just like who am I even there's gonna be so many links down in the description bar it's ridiculous but I'm definitely going to link her down there as well what am I doing guys take this brown mascara away from me now I'm gonna put on blush I've been obsessed obsessed with these blushes. They're the Glossier Cloud Paint blushes. Nothing is sponsored, literally no one knows who I am. So this is just me telling you that you need to go get these blushes. If blushes are something that you are interested in but you're a little intimidated by blush, because that was me, like I wanted to use blush because I knew blush was what was missing from my face, but A, I was scared of blush and B, unless I was going for something like today where I have a full coverage foundation and I'm highlighted and I'm contoured, I didn't want to use a powder blush because I didn't want to mattify my face. I got them in all four shades because they had a sale. It was two blushes for $30 versus them being $18 a piece and therefore $36. So I got all four. And I don't regret it. I feel like nose blush has been a thing for a minute. It's not necessarily the cutest look because you can look just like you're like you're sick and you got a cold and you've been rubbing your nose. But I've been into it just a little bit, just a little bit on a little tip, on a little tip to top tip part. Now I'm gonna move on to my eyes. I'm doing a giveaway. I've been doing YouTube off and on since I was 18 or 19. My camera stopped recording, but I don't know when. So 
let's see I was talking about how I've been on YouTube for a minute off and on I'm on right now I plan on staying on for a long time now I'm just really excited to be on YouTube and I'm really appreciative to everyone who takes the time to watch this for even half a second this is a super early thank you to anyone who is watching this what I'm giving away is I have two ColourPop eyeshadow palettes they aren't the ones that they put together I put these together myself this one is more coral has more coral oranges and then there's like a pink gold duochrome in it these three are matte that one's a duochrome shimmer this one is all matte and it's more oranges and reds and yellows and something about this color scheme just kind of reminds me of like the 70s and like a striped mock neck shirt that my mom would have worn as a child I don't know yeah so I just put those together the color combinations that I would wear I will have the information on both of these in the description box about the names of the colors I promise coming up I will have a more in-depth video just on the giveaway so okay my eyes I have been primed with the Urban Decay primer potion original I don't want to do anything too fancy so I'm just gonna take the Carly Bible palette today I'm going to use a purple color And I'm just gonna put that on my eye lid. Just gonna pack it on. Yeah, so I definitely was sleeping on this palette because I would see it online and I would watch YouTube videos on it. And I did it's not that I didn't think it was pretty, it was just like I have all of these shades already. But the thing about it is, is that you never really truly do because it's purple that I'm using. I thought I had this. I thought that it was more like a Buen Fresco from the Modern Renaissance palette, but it's not. It's a lot more warm, a, not as dusty. And I don't mean dusty in like a busted, like dusty way. I just mean muted. I'm gonna run a little bit of that underneath. I'm gonna highlight underneath my brow bowl now. This look is inspired by Sabrina, Claudio, and the photographs on Becca's website because I feel like Becca they do a really good job of really soft feminine makeup all right now that that's done I'm gonna put on some mascara and the mascara that makes my eyelashes look the best is a Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara I hate the name of this mascara like I get what they're going for but no and this mascara is so expensive I think it's something like $23 a tube but it's the only mascara I found that actually grabs onto my lashes from root to tip it's really hard for me to find a mascara that will coat the tips of my lashes without like staining my lid because like I said, they're super curled, so it's really hard to get the tip of my lashes without getting my eyelid. To get the tips of my lashes, I like to take the wand and use it vertically. Now I'm going to highlight with, you know, like actual highlighter. I'm using the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Poured in the shade Opal. The poured version is their... Um, is their cream. So I'm just gonna swirl a brush into that. And tap it on the places where I would like to be highlighted. Yeah. I feel like like there are always gonna be people who Want to be super highlighted and contoured and whatnot but i feel like makeup you know their trends or whatever i feel like the trend for super shiny highlighted skin is going out and people are favoring more more luminous 
glowy kind of JLo skin. It was like we OD'd on matte. Everything was matte, everything was super matte. It was about matte skin and the liquid matte lipstick started to like take off and skyrocket. And then we came in with the ultralight beam highlight on top of the matte skin. It was super pretty, but it was generally a lot of work. And so now I feel like we're coming into a, we just want to do a little bit less. Like we want to have easier routines. It's funny that I bring this up on a day where I'm putting on the most makeup. Trends are cyclical, you know, in another two years or whatever, we'll probably be back to being super mad again. Like who knows? I'm going to finish off with my lips. This is the, the ColourPop Ultra Satin Lip in the shade Tulips. The ColourPop Ultra Satin Lip is hands down my favorite liquid lipstick because their ultra matte lips are too dry. They don't crack visibly or anything like that. They just are not comfortable for me. And these, they're matte, but they don't dry down all the way. They stay very comfortable. One day I'll figure out how to do makeup that isn't monochromatic, but you know. I'm even wearing like a purplish, like a dusty purple shirt. I'm actually going to blot my lips because I want this to be more of a stain. And I'm just gonna kinda run the lip line since blurred lips are becoming more of a thing. Smudge lips are really in right now. And I really, really like that look, but I wanted something a little bit, a little bit more traditional. So this is my finished look. Just something soft and, you know, romantic. There we go, not feminine. And this is what I ended up with. I really like it. Now, I'm where, where am I going? Literally nowhere, but it was fun to sit down and talk and put makeup on my face. Uh, check the description box below. There will be a hundred million links to a hundred million cool things and details about the giveaway. Till next time. Bye guys.